Welcome to this week's video. Today we are located in the beautiful Wellington Dam region. For those people who aren't from WA or have no idea where Wellington Dam is, Wellington Dam is two hours south of Perth uh, and the closest major town is Collie. You get to it from Perth by taking one of the highways south or the freeway south and then you're going to take Coalfield Highway uh, to get towards the Wellington Dam area. Now there's probably three main parts to it. The first part is the National Park, that's Wellington National Park, uh, and that's located on the uh, sort of west side of the dam. Uh, you've then got the second part, which is pretty much all the state forest around it, which is free camping areas. So if you know where to go and you've got the right equipment, you can basically set up and camp there. And then the third part is the shared waterway. So the water behind me is part of the Collie River feed into the Wellington Dam. The reason I started doing uh, videos was for two things. Number one, we got the expedition and we wanted to show everyone what it was like because there wasn't a lot of material available at the time and we've been doing that. The second thing is I wanted to get people and encourage people to get out there. This is a good example of this. This is a location that's only a few hours from Perth and look to be honest with you you don't need a super heavy four-wheel drive with all the toys uh, to get out here. Uh, this is a beautiful little spot we've located here um, and look for those people who like their mod cons yes there's a fairly decent gravel track to get in here without too much forward driving. And yes, there's at least three, two or three bars of 4G on the Telstra network, in case you're wondering where we are. So pretty much everything you need. There's also marin in here and apparently redfin perch. Never fished in here before, but apparently you can catch them here as well. So plenty of it available. And again, this is in the state forest. So pretty much free camping if you know where to go. With those reasons in mind, the other thing I also hated about YouTube videos was when people would go, oh, wonderful location, and then never tell you how to get there or even remotely where it is. Um, in this video, at the end, I'm gonna put all the coordinates on how to get here, and so you can come and enjoy this beautiful spot as well. So the video, I'm going to do it in a couple of different parts this week. Number one, I'm going to go through a bit of footage around the area, show you where around, show pretty much what Wellington Dam can offer. Uh, and that will include the standard four-wheel drive going past gravel track videos, etc., etc. Also, I'm going to throw in a couple of things about the expedition that we've got set up that you can use on your emu or any real caravan or camping arrangement. Um, and I'm going to show a couple of those tips that we have there. Um, also, this camp is actually a really good example about um, how to level off your trailer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about leveling your trailer without having to buy all the expensive leveling devices and all the fancy things that you can get. Now the Emu Expedition is two, two and a half tons. It's a big trailer um, and it's fairly large. So we're going to talk also about leveling that out. So leveling your trailer. It can be really hard and it could be really easy. The easiest thing to do is not find a spot that doesn't have level ground. And to be honest with you, that mostly, in fact, most of the time it's not level. But there are a couple of simple things you can do that will make your life easier. And this example here I'm going to show you is how we've camped today. And this is definitely not level ground. So in this shot, our awning inside is on the high side and it falls away to the left hand side of our trailer, uh, which goes down towards the water. So as we look around this way, You'll already see straight away um, that we're quite a bit off the ground on this side. But I've talked about this in some of my other videos. And as you can see here, just sort of underneath the block here, I've got one of my blocks of wood that I have everywhere. And these are the ones I've talked about before. These are my recycled wood offcuts that I painted to make it look fancy and planed them just so they were smooth. And I basically got this under trailer. All I do is drive up, mark it up there and leave it onto there. That's all that's required. That gives us an extra inch on this side. And I've done a little bit of work on the other side as well to help lower it down. But the key point here is this is the sort of block that I use in use. Now also recently I've seen in some of the chats people have been talking about stabilizer legs. That's all they are, they just stabilize. So here, once I've got the level set up, I've just put the stabilizers down just to make sure that the trailer doesn't rock around too much uh, while we've got that here. I suppose while I'm talking about stabilizer legs, if you're still one of those people who's got the windy tool to wind those down, get rid of that. Go buy an impact wrench or something similar cordless 
because you realize you've just been doing it wrong this whole time. So if you're not, I've got the Makita uh, impact wrench for this and for changing tires, but um, that's certainly a way to do it. But stabilize legs, don't try to jack your trailer on them. Just use them for stabilizing once you've leveled them out. Let's have a look on the other side. So on this side, this is now the high side of the trailer. And look, just, just because I've you know, made a few YouTube videos doesn't mean I know everything about camping. But what I will tell you is that the minute you camp on the high side with the Expedition fold-out kitchen door is the minute you're probably going to walk into it in the middle of the evening. So as you can see here, again, six foot three. So I'm a good, definitely going to be hitting my head on that at some point later on. So I guess after we set all this up and got ready to do this video, we realized that this was the case. Uh, I think in the future we'd probably look at having the kitchen on the lower side so that we don't really have to have a problem with that. But look, hey, nothing wrong with YouTube is to show you the perfect things all the time. This is exactly what is wrong with this setup right now. Um, now, anyway, why I came on this side was the leveling. So again, rather than have like two or three blocks of wood all on the other side lifting up the other trailer, making it unstable, all I did was just shallow out a bit of this hole here so that the trailer could sort of drive into it whilst we had the block on the other side. I've got all the dirt just behind the tire, which I'm just going to fill back in and rake the leaves back in when we're finished so that it stays nice and level for the next person. But this is just a good example of if you've got the ability just to shallow scrape it out, that's probably an inch and a bit there that I've taken out with the shovel. So if you can do that, that will help to make the trailer nice and level. Leveling your trailer, if you're going to go left and right leveling, what's really important is just try to make sure that you either use some blocks of wood on one side and shallow it out a little bit on this side. In some of my other videos, I've talked about what's good and bad about the Emu Expedition. Now, one of the things that I love about the Emu, but can be a problem, and I'm certainly sure this is for other owners as well, and this applies to anyone who's got one of these fold-out awning situations. If we look over here, this is the extension arm, and this is the screw that locks this arm in place. Now, this is quite an important sort of screw here, because what it does is it locks the outside track into the inside track, which then holds the awning out straight, which then puts tension on the awning to keep it from sort of wandering around. Today, and we're going to be here for a few days, so what we've done here is we've put the poles out straight, but the same is used when the poles are attached to the trailer still. Now, this is great and all, except if we look at the other end over here, this one is missing this screw. Now, literally, I've decided I'm just going to buy a bag of these. I've replaced this twice already, and I've lost another one already. So I just keep losing them. They obviously just vibrate and come loose while we're driving around. And we do drive on a lot of gravel. So, so I think if you are going to get one of these, or you're going to get any trailer that's got a fold-out awning like this one, do your best. Make sure these things can't fall away. Secure them. Maybe I might look at some sort of way to secure it on there. So if it does fall out, it doesn't come away. Um, but I'm either just going to get a massive bag of them. So uh, Josh, if you're watching, I'm going to be coming to you ask you about more of these awning uh, screws here. And if you've got an expedition or a fold-out awning, get more of these screws because these things always fall out. Okay, I also said a couple of other tips for this video because we've got the trailer out and it gives me a chance to show all the cool things that I've sort of done along the way. Now, 18 volt tools or cordless tools are a game changer for um, making camping that little bit easier. Uh, there's so many things that you can replace by having 18 volt. The Expedition is fantastic, comes with inverter power and it's got plenty of solar power. So plenty of chances to recharge your devices. Um, our Prado has an uh, inverter as well, so we've got the ability to charge up our sort of devices as well in there. But um, two of the particular ones I wanted to show today um, are number one, the blower. Now this little device is pretty fantastic. Awesome. You won't need to really use a dustpan and brush inside your trailer anymore. You're just going to get one of these. It's got a bit of a flexible nozzle, so you can just get it behind the things, blow everything out, blow it away. I use it to blow, set, blow down any dust that sort of gets around it um, and just keep all the things nice and clean. So a little blower is pretty handy. Now, pro tip for the, blow, for the people who've got a Truman heater, if your heater won't light and you've got the gas cover off and everything, give this a bit of a quick blow into it. And if there's any dust in there, that thing just disappears and it's fired up. I've used this on several occasions to clear the dust from ours and it works every time. So in the hole, squeeze, problem solved. All right, so that's the uh, blower. Um, I use the Makita um, uh, LX range, uh, which is the cordless tools here. Um, but again, Ryobi, Azito, it doesn't really matter. They've all got the same ones and you're not going to use them that often, so they don't need to be industrial. 
So just find one that suits you. Now the other thing which is pretty awesome is that, and this is a common question amongst owners, is like, oh, what kind of fans do you have inside of your uh, trailer? Well, the answer is we don't have one. And the reason I don't have one is because A, we don't really need one, and B, it's modifications that we really just don't need to have inside the trailer. More things to move around, more things to come off. Now we don't camp on grid a lot, so therefore we're not gonna be running the uh, air conditioning and so forth in the trailer. So what have we got as a workaround? More 18 volt tools. This is the Makita 18 volt fan. Just put it back together here. Now, I won't talk too much about this one particularly, but the basic concept is these things are pretty fabulous. Camping in the real heat is actually pretty uncomfortable and not much uh, fun, but these little devices can be really useful. All of the manufacturers make them. Like I say, Makita got one, Ryobi got one. I'm pretty sure Azito's got one too, actually. Uh, DeWalt, pretty sure they've got one too. So anyway, all of the tools out there. So if you like the Bunnings tool section, this is where it's at. I actually got this one from um, Tool Mart, I think, um, when I bought some extra batteries and I got this kind of thrown in as part of that deal. Um, they rotate, they turn, you can turn them up and down. They last for ages. And again, because you've got the ability to recharge them, these are a great little kit. So they come with clips mostly, as one does, but we can hang them up and replace them. And again, these are fantastic, just for getting a little bit of extra airflow through your trailer. Completely not helpful in winter, but super helpful in that sort of spring, summer, and autumn period. Um, and you can place them anywhere you like around your uh, camping or in your bedding area. So 18 volt tools, game changer. So what have we covered so far? We've been leveling our trailer, how I've done that and how people can look at doing that. We've also looked at, make sure if you are gonna be on a level ground, don't do what I did today, which is park the trailer on the uh, high side and have the kitchen come up because at six foot plus, I'm gonna probably have a big mark on my forehead by the end of the weekend. So if that happens, we will definitely uh, <laughs> show you that line on my forehead. The other thing is, tools are really useful to making your camp experience a little bit better. So I've showed the blower there, a great little piece of kit and really helpful for keeping your trailer clean and keeping your campsite clean. And the second one, the 18 volt fan or the cordless fan is another good option for inside the trailer when there are a lot of posts and discussion about getting fans built into people's trailers. And this is spot number one. Now, I'll leave the coordinates in the description and it should be able to appear it on the screen here. We're on a nice big bend in the Collie River um, and the National Park is all behind us here. This is just an absolutely beautiful spot. Occasionally you get a bit of road noise from over the hill, but nothing too much to worry about and that will be nothing by later on this evening. Uh, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here. And as you can see, We've got some further spots down the river here, which we're gonna show with you a little bit later on. So if you do make the journey to here, you don't have to worry about finding this particular spot. There's gonna be a total of four that you're gonna be able to pick from. So, and even in those four, there's a couple of other areas that you can then deviate from as well. So this whole area is littered with good camping. Now it's the March long weekend here. So this place is gonna be like full of people by tomorrow or, or like over the weekend. So, you know, if you are coming, this is an easy couple of hours from Perth, so you can come down on a Saturday, stay, go home on a Sunday as well, even leave on a Friday night because the traffic, sorry, the road down is not difficult to drive. So, there are spots, and for all those channels that don't show where you go camping and they secret spots, I've now revealed what I think is a great spot and it's worth sharing with everybody else. Don't leave your rubbish behind, and don't leave toilet paper everywhere. No one likes that. That just makes you a horrible person. So, don't leave toilet paper everywhere. Right, so as I promised, I was gonna give a few directions about where things are at the moment. So in this section of the Wellington Dam, uh, this is in the Collie River sort of 
Reach, which is in the sort of eastern, northeastern most part of the Wellington Dam area. Uh, it's relatively close to the National Park, as in like the National Park is on the other side of the river here, uh, and it extends uh, all the way around that point and further up river from there. Uh, we're going to have a look down that way in a bit in a moment. So as you can see, pretty wonderful spot, very open here though, but this little section goes in either way, and as the water level falls here in summer, um, this will open up some really nice little spots that you'll be able to just drive straight in, drive along the little water here, and then be able to uh, hitch up your trailer or make your campsite here. Very peaceful, very quiet, absolutely beautiful. Number three in this area, I'll mark this one as well. We've driven a grand total of about a kilometre and a half from where we started this adventure today. And I've already shown you three or four really good spot areas that you could do. This section here has probably got two or three camps. We saw some other people already set up their campsite just round to the left um, from here. Um, and a huge amount of um, uh, opportunity for group camping down here as well as solo camping. Once you come down on these little access tracks, you can pretty much drive along where the high water would normally be. And now that it's receded in summer, you've really got access to the water straight in front of you. So it's a pretty marvelous situation and um, it's basically easy to, get, easy to get to and easy to, to, uh, to set up your campsite. So totally worth it. Plus awesome note, big up the person who left this giant push-up pile, I'll just go forward a bit so you can see it, who left this giant push-up pile here ready for winter camping. They've clearly marked their spot. That is gonna burn like anything come winter. But it is a fire ban at the moment, so no lighting fires, but points to the person setting up for their winter campsite. This is spot number four. This is a beautiful little corner of the uh, world here. It's actually on a bend in the uh, Collie River. And look, it's pretty marvelous. I think you could probably get a, a hybrid in here. Might be a bit tricky, but if you're one of those rooftop camper type people, this would be a fantastic spot. You've got plenty of camping area up on the back. And obviously someone's done the hard work and laid out a couple of campfires as well. If you've been watching my videos long enough, you know I'm actually into my fire pit, but um, people have already laid this out here as well. And there's obviously been some recent people camping here. Now, while I'm here though, because this really irritates the life out of me, things like this. This, 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 this bit of rubbish up here. It's not that hard. So even though I've talked this place up as being an option, the people before it didn't do you any favours and left their rubbish everywhere. So I'm going to go through and clean that up. Go back to my car and get a bag, come back and clean it all up. But um, yeah, look, probably don't need to say it to the people who are watching. But um, yeah, do yourself a solid. Don't leave your rubbish everywhere. It's just ruins it for everybody else. So that's pretty much it for this uh, week's video. Um, a couple of things. Number one, like I said, all the information to show you where to go, how to get here, uh, is going to be included in the description below. Secondly, if you've got some weird places and you say, hey, can you find us some places near this location or that location, write them in the comments or maybe share some of your locations because in the end we all want to be able to enjoy this wonderful outdoor environment. And lastly, if you haven't got out there, now's the time. So make sure you get out there. <laughs>